after a nearly two-month-long standoff, Occupy Wall Street protesters lost their home base. Hundreds of police officers cleared out New York's Zuccotti Park in a surprise night raid. It just seems like such an overreaction. It's like these people are peaceful. Similar crackdowns played out at Occupy camps in Denver, Oakland and Portland this week. City mayors called it a necessary move to restore public health and safety. But protesters at camps across the country, like here in Washington, D.C., say they'll keep the movement alive. Our strategy is to occupy, reoccupy, and reoccupy. Occupiers' rage against big business and government inaction has found a sympathetic ear with struggling Americans. But how can a leaderless movement with no concrete agenda keep up its momentum? A movement has to decide that it's going to make alliances with some people in power, whether they're politicians or union leaders or uh, even people in business, um, because those are the people who have, have the money, those are the people who have the ability to pass legislation, uh, those are the people who really can make the changes. Occupy Wall Street is flush with cash, several hundred thousand dollars in donations. Celebrities and high-profile politicians like Jesse Jackson have lent their support. But a partnership with labor unions, experienced in mass mobilization and the political arena, could lend the movement more clout. They help us spread our message, we help them spread their message, and it's a message that people around the country share. Born just a few months ago, the Occupy movement is still in its early stages. And if it survives, it could prove a training ground for progressive activists seeking to sway the future of the country perhaps starting with the 2012 elections. What do we do when we're under attack?